Yeah, my name is Sergey. I'm head of in-house studio in Azure Games and as well as publishing lead in Azure Games. Uh, to tell the truth, you are lucky to find me. Azure oh. Games, we finished the last year being top one mobile game publisher due to downloads. Uh, in total, more than one and a half billion downloads for year. So uh, basically, uh, because of hyper casual genres, but still we have a very strong portfolio of mid-core titles. Uh, we understand how to work both with ads monetization and with uh, in-app monetization and with very, very different genres. Uh, we have, uh, and we have about more than 150 games launched and still being published and iterated. So in our operation, more than 150 games and every needs attention, needs iteration. And uh, yeah, what about changing in the industry? We've been observing and in very detailed way what's going on uh, on the market for the last uh, three, four years, collect a lot of info, build some parsing services, build some business instruments, uh, business analytical instruments. And yeah, industry is changing becoming mature with its own problems, with its own uh, uh, new like uh, new uh, skyrocketed uh, studios and even genres, but uh, in general, in general, when it was COVID, when oh. it was COVID, we observed a very big growth of uh, ads monetization, we very see big growth uh, of hyper casual genre because of, mainly because of behavior of the user. Users played better, users played well. If we compare, for example, the line of the downloads from Monday till Sunday, for example, right now, look, right now, every publisher, every publisher from Monday to Friday uh, have like uh, such a level, uh, mm -hmm. like a stable line, flat, yeah. stable flat lane. Uh, and, but once it is Saturday and Sunday, tremendous increase. It is maybe 20%, uh, uh, we have 20% of increase in terms of downloads because uh, users play better or during weekends but when it was covid uh, it was always high 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 and on weekend little bit higher little bit so it was very good time for so increased it it increased with the weekends during covid mo most people were yeah playing. during yeah. during covid uh, it was uh, not so big difference between uh, from monday till friday and between weekends uh, and uh, after, Aha, okay. yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simultaneously, simultaneously, we saw tremendous boost of hyper casual because of new players, because of a lot of uh, money in the industry, because of providing studios with burning rates, with pay to proto models. So it means that uh, indie developer uh, or solo st or studio, they don't need to work on their own. They can. Uh, ask publisher to provide them with some financial aid and still receive royalty and sometimes even you have even 50% royalty and as well as financing so uh, very good really very good uh, very good conditions and uh, step by step uh, how to say step by step the competition was growing and uh, and still there were a lot of old titles old bald gold like you know for example we have titles uh, hit titles for three four years they still receive from four till eight million downloads per month games are more than uh, three four years it is amazing and sorry that's for games that's uh, millions in downloads yeah, so those are new players yeah of course new players. look uh, hyper casual market is unbelievably deep uh, probably every person that has mobile phone is our player and uh, it is uh, it is not uh, easy to calculate uh, this market. And uh, uh, for example, a guy who yesterday don't didn't even thought about did, didn't even think about games. He saw ads in Facebook or in Instagram, and he looked okay, nice one. He installed. He's our user. But okay, yeah, yeah. let me continue <laughs> step by step. Uh, the quality and quantity of game grows, the quality and quantity of studios uh, as well. Uh, and finally, what we saw uh, in 2022, the first time, the first time, ECPM uh, start falling. 
and uh, ECPM it is directly affect how much you can earn from uh, ads monetization. Several reasons. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of really good games being published. Worldwide recession, so crisis. Good. Uh, ad advertisers they just cut their spans. A lot of factors. Users start to uh, pay less. So actually, gaming industry, mobile game dev industry, right now, are uh, in tough times. Not terrible, uh, but still challenging, challenging times. But mm, what is more important now, it is a challenging time for developers. Because for them, it is almost uh, impossible to receive financing without providing any good uh, MVP, without any good uh, playable uh, version of uh, your game. And uh, from what I see, yeah, industry is changing. I see that the genre is changing. For example, hyper casual, it is becoming more and more complicated. You know, they call it hybrid casual. They call it hyper core. Uh, never mind. You can call it as you want. Uh, the only thing it is hyper casual. It is still a free to play game, but with better, with low entry threshold. It means that uh, you shouldn't uh, go through a lot of steps of tutorial. But with better meta game, with better. Uh, uh, in-app uh, monetization solutions with less ads because anyway ads is annoying and uh, I see it's transforming finally I heard even three years ago some people uh, crying like oh hyper casual is dead like right now like right now there were several articles in the industry uh, if some guys who right now are listening to us uh, they will understand what I'm talking about. There are some uh, huge titles who are saying like hyper casual is dead. Now it is not dead. Uh, the approach and the market itself change it, and you still you still can uh, create good games uh, with low entry threshold. But yeah, now your MVP, your prototype should be done not in two weeks but in two months. You should be ready for it. And uh, the situation is difficult for new players, for new studios. They have no recommendations, they have no distraction, and they have no portfolio. They can be very talented persons, but uh, they have to create at least one or two prototypes on their own, and it should be uh, ultra good to receive maybe financing and so on. But we are, stay, we are staying positive, we still, uh, we still invest, we still invest in studios and provide with them with financial support uh, and, all, and publishing without financial support. Actually for us, as uh, for big guys in this industry, uh, yeah, something changed, but uh, we started work uh, more smartly and that's what developers also should do. Not just make game, okay. I want to make a game because it is my idea. No, at least some basic understanding on what's going on in the market. You can open App Magic, you can open Sensor Tower, look through top charts, or I don't know, uh, any other way. But uh, anyway, you have to understand what's going on in the market, what's going on in uh, top three or in top three mobile games uh, in different geo. In the United States, for example, it will be enough. And. Uh, lack of expertise lack of expertise there is no publisher who is able to provide this very very uh, detailed game design help yeah a publisher like a producer like a producer in general can direct you and can uh, teach you something but game design should be uh, on your own game design level design it should be on your own and it is what the i creative. see Part, it is yeah. lack lack of game design in the industry. Technically, uh, industry grew a lot, really, for the last three years. Crazy, crazy. Right now, so many cool shaders can be written uh, without any difficulties because of uh, new stuff in Unity. You know, uh, a lot of uh, good art can be created right now. But just because maybe expertise and some aesthetic. Uh, feeling is growing in the industry and I like I like how it is maturing I don't like that still the lack of expertise lack of desire to see what's going on uh, and on the market and business side of the issue is not uh, very well prepared 
uh, for small studios. I understand. Uh, I mean, your question was. Uh, yeah, how my question was generally. Uh, thank you for all that information. It's really something that people should know and uh, at least think about. It. There are some, you know, uh, don't jump in if you think this is uh, a money grab. I will make this. I will calculate this and I yeah. will do it. Okay, maybe it will su succeed or maybe not. But if you put in some creative uh, aspect into it, then maybe you have more chance. But in right now, right now, it is good time not to look, not to look at uh, your competitors because how the industry uh, moved through the past years. Uh, game developers were observing what's going on in the market, on mobile market, and they were rethinking. Maybe even making a clone game, maybe rethinking, maybe take something from here, take something from here. Now it is the best time for your craziest ideas, but for unique ideas. Now the, ind the industry, I, I feel the lack, the lack of new mechanics, and, uh, and we see more and more cool titles are bringing from Steam. And from, for example, Survivor.io from Happy. Come on, even balance taken from Vampire Survivors. Happy just took everything. They make they made reskin. Even balance, even balance, really, I swear. Everything. I swear, even the balance, uh, everything from Vampire Survivors, and uh, it is mega successful as for me. And a lot of uh, some smaller titles, but still, I see that. Uh, at least I don't know. At least what I can recommend game developers uh, play small uh, games on Steam, maybe on web. Try to find some new mechanics, uh, maybe your own craziest ideas. Uh, why not? Yeah, creativity still. But right now, this threshold level to the industry is becoming higher because you have to be creative, you have to be technical, you have to understand game design. So many, you know, uh, so many A things. Unique art to be. style. Yeah. Competition is great, you know. Uh, three years ago, it was crazy competition between publishers. No. Now it is craziest competition between studios and between products. Some think about statistics. What we um, what we took for the 2022 uh, by making very very complicated analysis. Uh, look, in top 300 games right now by downloads, 60 percent were published in 2021 not in 2022 what we see what we can see there that uh, it, it is not very good trend it means that everything uh, the best was made before and now entry threshold level just to 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 start to receive at least uh, some traffic is higher what does it mean it means you have to make games better than the competitors and at the same time, the quality of prototypes, we also have this information. In 2021, in Hyper Casual, there were about maybe 6,000 prototypes or something like that. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I remember that in 2022, the quantity of prototypes increased twice or three times. At the same time, look, first, three, two or three times increased quality of competitors still new launches less than the previous year and okay. third thing the third thing ECPM falling down everything against you you have to be better you have to you have to do really really good gameplay you have to do really good creative stuff and uh, that's it yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's ever evolving market for sure and uh, it's nice to be able to, to follow those trends uh, and to learn from them, but not to take them as okay. I will make this game as everybody did. Uh, yeah. Maybe you will succeed, maybe you won't. But uh, yeah, let's let's make something creative. I'm always for that. That's like you know pipe dream, romantic yeah, <laughs> idea of game development. Absolutely. But yeah. still, still, this industry it is uh, it is a rock and roll, yep. and uh, a lot of risk, a lot of uh, you know you have to you have to do tremendous work to succeed. Mm. But still, there is a chance for luck, yeah. There is a chance because I I see that sometimes we start working with a studio and the first prototype we make together is becoming very good commercial launch. And uh, guys cool. as a studio, for example, 
uh, they live maybe one year or less and they make a very good game. Sometimes it also happens. It doesn't mean that I, uh, I'm pushing you to start uh, making something, but anyway, anyway, people like games and, you know, Hyper Casual was treated as uh, fake industry, uh, as something uh, not very stable because, look, uh, what did people say? Uh, it is not a very good business because you create games to show ads of another games. It is like bubble, yeah, that uh, will blast uh, sooner or later. Uh, I'm not agree that it is bubble because uh, the main active, the main, um, how to say, uh, the most important thing in that uh, scheme, user's interest. Users are playing, still playing that games. It is uh, the most important thing. And they will play because, uh, once again, if we turn to statistics, the quantity of downloads increased. I don't know exactly, but you can find proportion. For example, for 2021, it was about 13 billion downloads for the whole hyper casual. In 2022, 14. 14. Still one more billion downloads uh, better. Yeah. And uh, it means that uh, somehow industry is growing. Not so fast as growing quantity and quality of your competitors, but still growing. And this growth is not going to stop. Because what if you speak about tier three countries, tier two countries, and uh, people acquire mobile phones because there is another uh, situation. Uh, we live in, uh, in uh, how to say, in prosperity. Yeah, I, I mean, we like uh, uh, people on European continent and uh, probably in some Asian countries. Uh, some people don't understand that a lot of people, a lot of people on the earth who don't even have mobile phone. And uh, when they acquire a mobile phone, it is uh, amazing, but you need for them to spend time to play, to play free, to receive amazing experience just for watching ads. And uh, why not? And uh, yeah, LTV will be low, very low, but uh, CPI also low. And on the low margin, but with big volume, you can still uh, uh, you can still receive very good revenue. That's it. Yeah, great. Thanks. Really deep insight. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, if somebody has an idea for a game, uh, yeah. how can they pitch to you? How how does how does that work? Basically, basically, I ask for short pitch description. I usually want uh, my potential partners to describe uh, mechanics, to describe uh, in short words. No need uh, to provide me with GDD, how mm -hmm. how your unit developer will uh, operate with that. Uh, but but if GDD, it is of course perfect, of course perfect. Yeah. But basically, it is about just short pitch description of mechanics for example it's going to be a runner game where your uh, where user uh, via uh, via swipes or drag and move or whenever uh, avoid obstacles collect uh, some collectibles and uh, the setting is that uh, and for example well, for example uh, we have a runner game with the snakes and you have to uh, devour other snakes to become uh, bigger and after that it's going to be finished mechanics the finished mechanics look like that and uh, that's it uh, also it will be nice if you will provide with some references of art style you want to do uh, no, it will be enough it will be enough for the prototype it will be enough basically 10 sentences maximum uh, short description okay okay but once again you know pitch approval it is something not uh, my word for example in this issue it is not the last word because uh, there is no uh, guy in industry who knows how to do we know the best what we can do we know how not to do you know and for example if I see that the pitch is something I have already tested or if the pitch uh, will compete with already successful game I will not take it but uh, and if I see that in terms of game design, uh, it is something illogical, it is something not user-friendly. The only thing you should, really important advice, yeah. really important advice, the pain, my pain when I work with studios. Studios 
think not about user, but instead of user. You should understand hyper casual user, it is like uh, he never played before. You should understand like that, he never played before. He should take phone and start playing, if we speak about hyper casual. Uh, by the way, we spoke only about hyper casual. What about casual titles? What about mirkord titles? Uh, everything works the same, but uh, you have to take some pipelines, you have to take onboarding pipelines, progression pipelines, uh, paywalls, and uh, squeezing and uh, uh, widening your balance uh, uh, by several templates. They are well known in the industry, so I mean that if you make a mid-core title, your onboarding should be very well uh, and very detailed. Uh, the first paywalls or the first troubles uh, should be also not even maybe within 15-20 uh, minutes of gameplay. It, it also depends on your uh, main strategy, on how many content you have and so on. But uh, still, there is this thing called overseeing effect. The more you play something, the more you do something, the more you, uh, the more you understand. But don't be lazy, just play and uh, try to take this expertise. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we're running out of time, and uh, yeah, that was uh, really insightful. Thank you for the thank you for the, that uh, level of explanation. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Uh, if anyone wants, uh, you can find me LinkedIn, Sergey Martinkevich, Azure Games. Uh, sometimes I post some uh, interesting insights, and as well as in our blog, in our Azure Games blog. Uh, it is, uh, you can find it in English as well. Uh, we provide with some insights, some materials. It can be helpful, why not, yeah. yeah, yeah. I will link that in the description of the video, perfect, so yeah. Perfect, yeah. Perfect. yeah. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks. And uh, love games and play games, and the games will love you, yeah. yeah exactly, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly. It, that's it, that's it. Thanks.